following program deals with a controversial subject. The theories expressed are not the only possible interpretation. Viewers are invited to make a judgment based on all available information. Tonight, lift off. We have a lift off. We investigate the most extraordinary event of the 20th century. That's one small step for man. Man landing on the moon. One giant leap for man. But believe it or not, some people say it never happened. This whole thing was a fake. Decide for yourself as we explore the evidence. The angle has landed. Analyze official government photos. What a ride, what a ride. Examine the films. The flag flaps on the moon where there's no atmosphere. And hear the testimony of one former astronaut who's not afraid to speak his mind. NASA could have covered it up. Could the government have orchestrated the deception of the century? NASA could have pulled off the greatest hoax of all time. You be the judge on conspiracy theory. Did we land on the moon? On July 16, 1969, America held its breath. Ten, nine, ignition sequence start. Blasted into space, beginning its 250,000 mile journey to the moon. During their eight day voyage, the Apollo 11 astronauts saw spectacular views of the Earth. Floated in a weightless environment and supposedly went where no man had gone before. Start looking good, down and half. Lights on, picking up some dust. Four forward, drift into the right a little. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. We copy you down, Eagle. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. But did it? Did they really land on the moon? Most of us think so. Millions of people watched on television as the lunar lander touched down, and these unforgettable words were spoken. That's one small step for man. But even today, there are those who claim that believing in man's one small step requires one giant leap of faith. Bill Casing was an analyst and engineer at Rocketdyne, the company that designed the Apollo rockets. There were many problems that, that evolved during the 60s that led people to believe that we were never going to make it to the moon. Three decades ago, when the world watched Apollo's lunar landings, Bill Casing was watching too. But what he saw on television, combined with his experiences at Rocketdyne, made him a skeptic. The whole thing then seemed phony to me. I think it was an intuitive feeling that what was being shown was not real. As he studied the footage more closely, he was shocked to find several inconsistencies. Casing observed that despite the clarity of deep space, the stars were missing from the black lunar sky. He saw the American flag waving even though there is no air on the moon. And he discovered that there was no blast crater beneath the lunar lander, where its powerful rocket engine had fired. This evidence convinced Casing that we never sent a man to the moon. But NASA dismisses these charges. There are always going to be people who believe uh, some outlandish theories and the notion that we, that we somehow were able to fake the lunar missions is pretty outlandish. 
as outlandish as it might seem, it has been estimated that as many as 20% of Americans believe we never went to the moon. But how could anyone think that one of the greatest moments in human history is a hoax? Is it really possible that NASA deceived the world? According to a former astronaut, it's entirely possible. Regarding the Apollo mission, I can't say 100% for sure whether these men walked on the moon. Brian O'Leary was a NASA astronaut in the 1960s and served as a science advisor during the Apollo moon missions. It's possible that NASA could have covered it up uh, just in order to cut corners and to be the first to allegedly go to the moon. Was getting to the moon first so important that our government would consider faking it? To find the answer, we have to go back 40 years to a time when America and the Soviets were locked in a struggle for world domination. People assumed that the nation that won the space race would win the Cold War. We defined that as being first to the moon. It was a time of more or less national hysteria. On October 4th, 1957, the Soviets terrified America when they sent Sputnik, the world's first satellite, into orbit. The New York Times had to publish an article explaining to Americans that it did not carry nuclear bombs that could be dropped on the city from that altitude. The American public's fear of nuclear annihilation intensified as Russia took the lead in the space race. House Speaker announced in, in Congress that we may be headed for extinction. Many feared that the Soviet Union's ultimate goal was to put a missile base on the moon. Meanwhile, America's space program was having difficulty even getting off the ground. The chances of getting to the moon and returning safely to Earth were something like 0.0017%. In other words, virtually an impossibility. What actually happened, in my mind, is that during the 60s, they said, if you can't make it, fake it. But if the Apollo missions were fake, how was this monumental hoax accomplished? According to Casing, the launch of Apollo's Saturn V rocket was real. It just never sent astronauts to the moon. The astronauts were launched with the Saturn V. Then, in order to account for their disappearance, they simply orbited the Earth for eight days. And in the interim, they showed these fake pictures of the astronauts on the moon. But on the eighth day, the command capsule separated from the vehicle and descended to Earth, as of course was shown in films. This theory inspired the 1978 movie, Capricorn One, in which the government attempts to fool the world by faking a mission to Mars. We do not claim this planet in the name of America. We claim it in the name of all the people of the planet Earth. The Apollo footage is strikingly similar to the scenes in Capricorn One. Producer Paul Lazarus suggests that the film's plot line could be more fact than fiction. I believe, had they wanted to, that NASA could indeed have pulled off the greatest hoax of all time, never sent anyone to the moon, and recreated it in a television studio. And I believe it could have been done at that time. The technology was in place. The footing is solid. The surface seems powdery. The surface is fine and powdery. I can pick it up loosely with my toe. What we put up on the screen was our own simulated version of whatever we could do within a $4 million aid budget. But with NASA's $40 billion budget, Casing believes they had the resources to pull off a hoax if they couldn't make it to the moon. The reason I believe that uh, NASA and the government faked the moon landing was basically it was technically impossible to do it. And they simply had to come up with some sort of alternative that they felt the public would believe.
Casing theorizes that the lunar landings were actually filmed in Nevada's high desert at the top secret military base known as Area 51. Area 51 is one of the most heavily guarded facilities in the United States. If you went in and tried to get some information, you could be shot and killed without any warning. Russian spy satellite photos of Area 51 reveal not only a series of hangars that resemble movie sound stages, but also barren moon-like areas, which coincidentally are covered with craters. Compare this photo of a lunar crater allegedly taken from the moon's orbit by Apollo 10 with this satellite photo of a crater at Area 51. Even astronauts.